Hello, Caden. How are you today? Jared, hello. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm good, doing good. Good, good, good. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So this time, we watched one of my personal favorites. Mm, we did. Uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture. Uh, that particular movie gets a lot of a lot of bad press, I guess. It okay. always has. Uh, yet, it still remains popular in its own right. Uh, personally, it's one of my favorite Star Treks because it sums up what I think Star Trek should be about. Um, now, you coming, you've never seen Star Trek. You, you're not a Star Trek fan. Yeah. You coming fresh into this, what did you think of that movie as a whole? <clears throat> Well, I'll preface this with this. I am a big Star Wars fan. Now, I'm not like a super mega fan or anything, but I uh, grew up on Star Wars. Um, I was born in 99, but my dad grew me up watching the original trilogy, and when I got older, the prequel trilogy, and so on and so forth. So I have an affinity um, for these types of things, and I understand that <clears throat> this movie in particular was inspired by A New Hope. Now, I know that it had a show previously... Um, that it's connected to and really to understand the full context of the film I think that you should watch those seasons leading up to the movie the original show um, because there's some I don't know if they're called easter eggs but there's some payoffs that you get in the movie that you wouldn't understand quite well if, unless you watched mm -hmm. the show at first um, I've seen a few from the documentary that we watched with some of the different characters and whatnot. Oh, okay so um, it's well, it is a continuation. It is. And what I was going to say, it's a continuation, but also works well as a standalone film. Yes. Um, you don't necessarily need to, but if you want the full experience, that's what I would recommend, watching those first seasons of the original Star Trek show. But anyway, uh, maybe, I, I don't know what my, if my opinion is, you know, the popular one or whatnot, um, but I enjoyed the film very much. Now, I've watched, I've only watched the newest updated version, the 2022 version, Director's Cut was what I believe, and you've seen the whole development from when it first came out, yeah. or at least the original movie, and seen it edited to the 2001 cut, and then the 83 TV movie, like, there's a ton of different cuts of this film. Yeah, um, yeah, there's at least five that I know of. And you've seen them all, and you love yeah, them all. pretty much. Um so maybe I'm spoiled because I got to only see yeah. <laughs> the one that took 40-something years to perfect. But uh, I really like the CGI. Uh, you really get a sense of space. And you really get a feel for the Enterprise and the, and the ship and the crew of the ship. They, they take their time setting it up. Now, that could be a criticism that they maybe took too much time. Um, but like you said, they were trying to adapt... Uh, trying to adapt a script from a show to a movie. You mentioned something that it almost watches like a like a book, like you're reading a book, like how a book would describe the vastness of space or the different colors of the galaxy. You know what I mean? And the movie yeah. does a great job of setting that up. Now, once it gets to the action part, it gets going. You know what I mean? Um, but it does take some buildup, and I think it's well worth the wait. Um, it's a little slower, and you know, if you're a, a mature audience, I think you enjoy the film. I think the villain, Viger, is what you don't even know what the name is until um, it's almost over. Yeah. Um, but this big menacing cloud that just vaporizes and consumes everything it comes in contact with, and it's heading towards Earth, and the Enterprise is tasked with stopping whatever this is, at whatever cost, to protect Earth. Captain Kirk is, and he gathers up his old crew, so to speak, and uh, and heads out there. They pick up Spock along the way. Um, but uh, overall, enjoyable film. I really like the whole message at the end about... Um, I want I, I can't remember his name. The commander, the original commander of the ship that was... Uh, commander Decker. Decker. Captain Decker. Captain Decker. He was promoted to commander. Commo so. Promoted or demoted to commander. Demoted, sorry. <laughs> and then demoted, demoted again demoted. from science officer. <laughs> um, him basically sacrificing his life to keep V'ger from consuming Earth. Um, you know, and it's, it's neat because Stephen Collins, there's a commentary by Stephen Collins. It's the audio commentary for the film. Okay. 
He said, not a lot of people got it, because I, I didn't get it when I was a kid. Okay. But basically what Captain Decker is doing, he says, you can save Earth, but you have to give up your physical existence in this reality. Yeah. You're not dying, per se, but you're evolving along with this feature character sure. into whatever it's evolving to. Yeah. So it's a, it's a giant leap of faith. Yes, and a giant sacrifice. And, exactly. Into the unknown. Right. For your fellow humans. Yeah. Right. But again, that's what Star Trek was about, is exploration of space and the unknown. Yes. It's not about how evil and is the villain and, and how do they kill each other. That's just not what it's about. And really, if you think about it, V'ger or Voyager, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, it wasn't really evil. It was just looking for knowledge. It was seeking its creator. Yeah. Um, and that's all it was doing. Like a child looks for their dad, V'ger was looking for the creator. And I think it's a good microcosm of maybe humanity and our want and quest for a higher power, as most people would call it. Some people call it the universe. I would say that's Boulder Gash. I, you know, I, I understand it as creator, God of the universe. Right. The Bible says that uh, in every pure person's heart, there's a yearning for that. Whether they realize what it is or not, or have an understanding of that, it's something that is in every human being. And I think Star Trek captures that well with this film and the shows that search for the unknown uh, to become a higher level of existence. And I think that's all Vijay was trying to do um, in a very menacing logical way. only way, in a menacing way, with no emotion. Yeah, it was killing carbon. Uh, what do they call the humans? Uh, the carbon... Um, Carbon-based units. The carbon units. <laughs> um, and Spock was able to identify that. Thank goodness they had Spock on board or they would have been totally Lost. screwed. Yeah. But um, anyway, you know, I, I appreciate that, what Captain Decker sacrificed. And not only that, but his love was imprinted into the robot itself, too. Her consciousness was almost downloaded. Yeah. Isla, I think her name was. Ilea, right. Ilea. And he loved her so much, and he saw her, and he's like, she's in there. This is totally worth it. You know what yeah. I mean? He tells yeah. Kirk, as much as you wanted the Enterprise, I want this. Yeah. To be joined together with his love. So it wasn't just a sacrifice, but to join with his long-lost love again. I think it's poetic. Yeah. Um, and the CGI, like I said, I didn't see the, up, the old stuff, but the updated stuff really is done well. It um, is. It's it really is. trippy, too. It's not... And like we saw... The point of it was to be abstract. V'ger is just living ship. Right. It's not going to look like a Star Wars spaceship. It's almost like a living organism. Uh, when Spock yeah. flies through the memory part of the ship. Right. I mean, it's just basically flying through its brain, everything that's come across. I thought that was sick. And uh, so, very well done. Um, a little slow, but, you know, if, you, if you're mature enough, I believe that you would enjoy it very much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to me, it's one of those, and obviously still a foundational science fiction film. I do, too. Um, I still love it to this day. I uh, loved it when I saw it when I was 10 years old. Yeah. And I still love it to this day. Absolutely. And as you pointed out, I've seen almost every other version of this film. I love yeah. that film. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the reveal of V'ger being an old Voyager probe? I thought it was very unexpected and, and kind of funny almost, not in a bad way. I just thought, man, that's what it's been this whole time. It's just an old space probe, you know, from 300 years ago with NASA back in the day. But I thought the way they did it was cool. Um, basically, this old probe gets picked up by this living, these living robots out in the vastness of space, and they built a ship for it, and it yeah. became alive by looking for the knowledge. That it was designed it, to look for. Yeah, right. and it, but by looking for all this knowledge, it became sentient. And then all it was was looking for its creator. It's for its purpose. And I think that's what we all human beings are. We all are looking for purpose, our purpose. What's our place in this world, our place in the universe? And I personally believe you find that from God and in, in Scripture. Um, but yeah, very well captured, encapsulated in the film. There's a lot of not only spiritual truths, but life truths that you can pull from it. Um, sure. The script was well written, um, and those tropes really pay off in the end, in my opinion. I always found the, I don't know how 
you feel about this, but I always found the Beedra character to be my favorite character, even though it was the villain of the mm. story. Yeah. It was this creature that it knows it's alive, it knows <laughs> that it has to find something, but it doesn't know what. It doesn't yes. know anything. No. Um, at least about its creator. Yes, and itself, uh, its purpose. Yeah, yeah. right. Is and it all there is? Is I think Captain Kirk said, or maybe Spock said it. Yeah. Um, is this all is that this there all is? that I am? Is yeah. there nothing more? Yes. So it's it's like you said, it's a natural yearning that everybody has. Yeah. And Beecher's just trying its best to do that. Almost almost human in that respect. Yeah. Yep. It is. Absolutely. At its core. Yeah. Really. I mean, and it was designed by humans and humans. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I think it's all. It's all really tied up neatly. <laughs> it didn't know that. Which no, it didn't. People have often criticized that too, but okay. But again, I, I think it's part of the mystery. Well, it, if you think about it, it wasn't a sentient being when it was probed by NASA. It was just a robot that yeah. it got input from the space station. But once it was lost and then picked up by this alien robots, then it became alive. So it would have no recollection of anything before that. It's like a newborn baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. That might be, a, in my opinion, an unfair criticism. But anyway. Well, they did get criticized. But when you look at the film, yeah. and I noticed this as you, you and I were watching it, every object, at least produced by Viger, is a probe. Yes. Um, the entity that they think is a crew member is a probe. Yeah. Uh, everything except for the weapon system. I think that was the, the weapons were... Just pure like energy. absorbing information yeah, and think. converting real objects to, to data form. Yeah. Um, so other than its weapon system, everything about it was a probe. Yeah. So essentially, it's just trying a to learn. Giant, highly advanced, uh, powerful probe looking computer, basically. Yeah, for yeah. its creator. Just pulling in data. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think Spock might have been my favorite character. Um. And maybe that's... I'm not the only one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, Spock's uh, always been one of my favorite um, characters. And it's not necessarily because of... I think his character development really is one of my favorite things about the film. Is Obviously, we know Spock is Vulcan. He's all logic all the time. No emotion. But he has this epiphany as he's facing V'ger that just like he wants to be, V'ger has no emotion... He has no idea what love is. It has no idea what love is or friendship or enjoyment. And that's what separates the crew of the Enterprise from this threat. And that's how what they use to defeat it, essentially. That's what Captain Decker uses to defeat it, his emotions, his yeah. emotional decision. That's what Spock uses. He grabs Captain Kirk's hand. He says, just this simple act. It has no idea what this is, and this is what we can use to defeat it. So... And Spock crying, of course, like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Spock doesn't know emotion. Yeah, he's stone cold killer. You know what I mean? <laughs> see, that wasn't in the theatrical version. Wow. So you didn't see that for see? years. I saw it on the televised version because they put it back in. Yeah. But um, but in the theatrical version, you didn't have that. I think it adds layers to Spock. Yeah, it, yeah. His human side comes out. And the people that put it back together thought, why did you take that out? Oh, That's great. the whole moral of the story. You robbed it. Of yes. It's all its meaning. Yeah. So maybe if the way the film sits now, it would have been well, more well received. Yeah. Obviously, but that's hindsight's 2020. All you can do is move forward. So, yeah. you know, hopefully if you guys are in a little bit of an older audience or even younger, um, but specifically to the older audience that might have remembered when this film came out, I think you guys should give this updated version a rewatch, and I think it'll be, be everything that you want a Star Trek to be in the first place. And I think even younger audiences can enjoy this. Like I said earlier, it's a little slow. That would be my criticism of it. It's just a little slow going at the beginning. You know what I mean? It's like pacing slow, but for a purpose. So if you're immature and you need explosions all the time, it's probably not the film for you. But if you can sit down and enjoy a very well shot, and animated and, and visually if visual effects it's very well done now um, and I think a mature film movie buff would enjoy this film very much yeah, yeah. I agree yeah. alright Caden do you have any more thoughts before we wrap up no man you guys give it a watch tell us what you think um, 
tell us if we're off on a little bit of some of these things or if we agree or you know we'd love to hear from you guys so whatever you guys want to say please let us know we read all the comments uh, we appreciate you guys for watching these videos uh, give us suggestions of other movies maybe other films that you think would fit we're kind of on this AI kick right now and uh, so if you have any other suggestions let us know we'd love to check it out we appreciate you guys uh, always for hanging out with us alright we appreciate you thank you Caden yes sir thank you again for doing this absolutely and uh, next time we're going to try something a little different Ooh. I don't know if we'll do a movie reaction or an audio commentary okay Kate and I will decide, and we'll see you guys next time. Well, you guys be looking forward to the surprise next time. <laughs> uh, God bless everybody.